Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we are continuing our march through all of the crops available in FS25 by talking about green beans. Now green beans is a new crop added to the Farming Simulator franchise in Farm Sim 25. Very similar to rice, long grain rice, spinach, and peas. Now in large scale industrial vegetable farming is kind of intriguing to me and I'm really glad that they added it to the game. Let's take a look here at the infographic the Giants provided before the game's release. We can expect green beans to give an average yield of 13,950 liters per hectare. Now that is before taking into effect any yield bonuses that we might have from, let's say, fertilizing or weeding, etc. We're gonna have an average selling price on the easy economy of $2,160. We're going to use an average of 280 liters worth of seed per hectare to put our green beans in the ground. We're going to have an average growing duration of four months. And we're going to be able to put our green beans in the ground anytime between April and June. And we can expect harvest between August and November, depending on when we did put our green beans in the ground. Now let's talk a little bit about how do we, uh, well, what kind of special equipment do we need? Overall, the only real piece of special equipment we need is the harvester. So let's go ahead and take a look here in the shop. We're gonna find our green bean harvester under the vegetables category in the shop. And we have one base game green bean harvester. Now, by the time you are watching this video, there may be mods of green bean harvesters out there. And if that is the harvester that you should choose to use, that's all fine and dandy. I'm gonna be using the base game because I feel it's extremely important to demonstrate base game functionality to you so you have a good grasp and understanding of how mods may affect your overall gameplay as compared to the base game. At any rate, the BP2140E is our green bean harvester. It's gonna cost $498,500 to buy. Now, I am leasing this and well, in the first few harvests, that might be the course of action that you take as well. And we can lease this for $25,000. Now that is gonna be the initial lease cost. After that, it's gonna cost you $4,985 per day that you own this. And it's gonna cost you $10,468 per hour that you run the machine. And that hour is real time hours not accelerated in game hours. So you, you can't cheat the system by running it 0.5 times and get two hours of work for one hours of cost. That's not how it's gonna work. And we're gonna talk toward the end of this video once we get the harvest done, basically how long did it take for me to harvest this one hectare field worth of green beans so you can kind of have a general payoff ratio of cost to income. What field are we going to be using? Well, we're going to be using field 41 here on River Bend Springs. And the reason we're using field 41 is farmland 41 is 1.18 hectares in size. So this field is one square and as such, it's going to be very easy to work with. Rectangular, I should say. And as I mentioned, the farmland... So I wanted to cut myself off here because... I wanted to freeze frame this real quick in the video. This is in post edit. We can see that field 41 already has a mulched state before we dive into the rest of the video. This is gonna be very important as we get further into the video with respect to harvest. I'm gonna demonstrate that the act of harvesting does indeed seem to mulch the field. And I was a little surprised to see the field was already mulched. So going back and editing the video, I can see we started out in a mulched state. And the fact that we are mulched post harvest simply implies that harvesting your green beans will give you a mulched state. So you don't need to mulch after harvesting green beans because the act of harvesting the green beans already gave us that state because we put plant material back onto the ground. And that is ultimately gonna give us that two and a half percent bonus. So with that, let's go ahead and get back to the program. Size is very, very near to one hectare. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot of extra farmland that isn't field size. So this is about as close as we're gonna get to a one hectare field on any of the Giants base maps 
that is going to be fairly easy to work. There may be other fields on this map that are closer to one hectare, but the field land is going to be, well, it's going to be larger than that. So for example, here, field four, well, it's one hectare almost exactly, but we do have a fair bit of unusable land here that is also a part of that. So that's why we're up here on field 41. We have prepared this field in many ways such that it is ready to plant or seed. And you're going to want to do that sometime before April. So if your field needs lime, go ahead and put lime on it. If your field needs plowing, go ahead and plow it. If your field is ready for mulching and it needs a mulching state and you want that bonus, go ahead and do that. I've got another video related to how to get 100% yield bonus. I'll put a tick up in the upper right corner to that if you want to go ahead and check that video out. And now to that end, let's talk about what we need to do in order to put our green beans in the ground. And to do that, we're going to need a planter. So I have here a planter that we're going to be making use of, and we're also going to need some seed. So let's go ahead and take a look at where we're going to find this seed in the shop. Under our seeding category, we're going to be able to find seed here in big bag format, pallets, big bag format, and then palleted bags of seed. All of them are $1,260 each, and we get 50 liters more seed if we buy them in pallet format in little bags. So just a little bit of way of getting a little bit more for your money. We can also find our seed down here under objects. And we have big bags of seed. We have big bag pallets of seed. And we have pallets of seed here as well. As I mentioned, we're going to be making use of a planter. So we cannot use our vegetable planters in order to put our green beans in the ground. We will have to use a traditional planter. And we're going to find those up here under seeding. And for this video, I have chose to use the Optima RS planter. It will have the capability of both seeding and fertilizing at the same time. While our field is already 100% fertilized, we don't need to put fertilizer in the ground at the same time. So we're just going to skip putting fertilizer in our planter. So now I'm going to go and load this up with seed. And then I want to show you an interesting trick with this particular planter because it has two different positions. It has a road position, which is what we are in now, and then it has a position for field work. Okay, we have loaded it up with seed. We don't really hold a whole lot of seed here. But that's okay. We're not going to need a whole lot of seed for our green beans. We're going to disconnect from the end and we're going to reattach here in the middle with this particular planter. And then once we do that, we're going to hit X to fold this planter up. And now it is in basically work mode and we are ready to plant. Something else we need to do is we want to make sure that we toggle our cedar or planter over to green beans. So we're going to hit Y until we see our green beans show up. Now that they are shown up, we are ready to go. We're going to come up here. We are going to address the field. We're going to drop our planter down, turn her on, and off we go. We are now officially putting green beans in the ground. I'll come back to you once we're done, and we'll see how much seed we actually ended up using. Now, if we take a look at our cedar, we have... 389 liters worth of seed left in our planter and that means we use 271 liters worth of green bean seed in order to plant our field and if we once again take a look at the Giants infographic it says seed 280 liters per hectare so yeah that is that's pretty close so there you go um, so that's what you can generally expect to see as far as overall seed usage goes when putting green beans in the ground. At this point, we are ready to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and move into May and we'll see what our first growth stage is going to look like. 
and then keep on progressing through all the different growth stages until we have finally made our way to be ready to harvest. Our first growth stage of green beans, and as you can see, we have plus 95 yield bonus. We're fully fertilized, and well, it is May. So once again, let's go ahead and bump on into June and see how our growth progresses. Things are looking great in June. Our green beans are still growing, so we'll move on into July. I expect two more months and then we will be ready to harvest. All right, here we are. We've made it to August. Our green beans are ready to harvest. We can see we even have some really nice beans on the on the vines here. So looking forward to firing up this oxbow and well, seeing what it does. Now this oxbow does have some interesting tricks up its sleeve with respect to its driving. All right, so right now we're in all steering mode. All right, so the front wheels turn, the rear wheels turn. It gives us a pretty decent turning radius for the size of this machine. Control Y. We now have crab steering left. So it's going to drive in a kind of a sideways fashion. Grab steering right. Well, of course, it will drive in a sideways fashion to the right. And control Y, all wheel steering. There we're back. Now, why why might we have this crab steering? Well, it is a way of harvesting your crop, and as a result of engaging crab steering, right, as you can see here, our Rear wheels are not necessarily trailing directly behind our front wheels. So it's in essence a way to uh, alleviate um, soil compaction or minimize soil compaction or make soil compaction more even amongst the field. Okay? So we have crab steering left engaged. I'm going to turn on the harvester. We need to unfold it first. Okay, there we go. Lower our thing down. Turn it on. Alright, we got things running now. Got some cool animations. Alright. And we're going to come up and basically I'm going to, just to make driving easier in this mode, turn that on, and off we go. So now we can see our front tires and our rear tires are leaving tracks beside each other. We're harvesting at an angle. And that is, in essence, crab steering mode and why you might want to enable crab steering mode. Clearly you're not going to go up and down a field unless you alternate crab steering left, crab steering right because you don't want to kick you know half of your harvester out into unharvested crop especially if you have crop destruction enabled. So this is going to be for either always going in the same direction around or you're going to be alternating steering left and steering right as you are kind of progressing around the field. Now it's important to note that interesting enough hired helpers do not um, do not work with crab steering. So if you have crab steering enabled and you hire a helper they're, they're going to disable it. So, just a couple cool little things to note with respect to this particular harvester and its functionality. You see we are shooting our green beans into the rear compartment here. And I'm just going to, well, continue to harvest our green beans. And I'll be back with you once we have either finished our field entirely or we are ready to offload. 
Now, in demonstrating the crab steer and the harvesting with crab steer mode enabled, I didn't want to leave the impression that that's how you had to harvest with this particular harvester. So you can see we've turned it off here. I'm now in all steering mode and we're just driving up and down. All right, the wheels are one behind each other. We are leaving a bit more, in my opinion, round deformation than we had left here when we were doing the crab steering. But it is possible. It is possible to completely use this under the normal all steering mode with respect to our harvest. Now, something else I wanted to point out here is the mulching effect. As we have seen with other crop videos, we get kind of this natural mulched effect with respect to many crops when we harvest, when we leave stuff on the field, plant debris. Now, it's less obvious here because of the fact that for whatever reason, I guess when I prepared this field, I didn't set it to be mulched. So this area here that's not been harvested still shows that it needs mulch or it is mulched. We can see the rest of this though, right? We have a mulched state. So I would, I would venture a guess to say that um, based on what we're seeing with respect to the portions of the field that we have harvested, that we don't necessarily need to mulch fields where we have harvested green beans because they seem to have a natural mulched state as a result of the act of harvesting. So that is pretty sweet. Uh, we are probably more than halfway done the harvest. Uh, we have just 56% in our harvester at this point. So it looks like to me that we're probably gonna be able to put the entirety of this field into the harvester before we have to offload it. So with that, I'll see you all in a few minutes. So something really, really intriguing here. If you look at the capacity here, 13,499. If we go back here to our infographic, we have 13,950. So unlike some of the other crops that we've seen, where the infographic basically told us the yield that we would have had with 0% bonus in our green beans, that is not necessarily the case, which is really confusing because the language on the infographic is the same. Max yield per hectare for the crop, and we had a plus 95% on our field here yet we are basically at or around where we should be assuming we had no extra yield bonus so could that be an intrinsic bug with the version that i've got i've got 1.3 installed as far as the game goes so that is kind of interesting interesting if you were expecting to get near double the yield of that infographic well that doesn't appear to be the case. Now, got our trailer. We're going to pull up here to our harvester. We are going to hit O to move the bunker up. The whole thing tips up, tips out, and then we offload our green beans into our trailer. I don't know if I've mentioned with respect to pricing and everything on the green beans yet. Let's go and take a look at that. We come here to our prices screen. We come to our green beans. We have an average high, $22.91, an average low of $20.21. I averaged these together, and that's $2,143. Really close to what the infographic said as far as average price on easy economy which is what we are on right now. Now we also can process our green beans over at the processed food factory into 
jarred green beans. Now, I find it funny that the green beans are jarred, but our, car our peas are canned. And then our spinach is put into bags. So I find that kind of interesting. But at any rate, we have a high of 57.12, a low of 55.77. So that comes out to an average on uh, easy economy of 56.44 or thereabout. And like we have seen with other crops so far, our green beans and our spinach, here at the canned food factory, 100 green beans is going to make 45 jars of green beans. So basically we have 45% yield. What we dump in here, we're going to get 45% out as far as our jarred green bean production. So if we have 13,499, that's going to give us basically 6,000 units of jarred green beans or basically six pallets of jarred green beans. Now we're not gonna dump all of these green beans into our production facility. I just wanna sell a few here. We'll see what our price comes up to as far as money earned. 6,123 and we have 10,844 liters left so we sold just under 3,000 liters I'll put up during post edit the exact amount and what that came out to as far as as far as per thousand liters and then let's go ahead and put the rest of this here in our canned food factory and I think as probably we feel we're gonna realize here we're gonna make a lot more money from our jarred green beans then by selling our bulk green beans. And we are here on Riverbend Springs. If we look at our prices screen for our jarred green beans, we're gonna be able to sell those at the farmer's market that is pre-placed on the map, the restaurant, the small farmer's kiosk that is pre-placed on the map, and that is gonna be about it. Now I've gone ahead and placed a small farmer's kiosk a farmer's market in a big farmer's kiosk here on our testing field because they are going to be the primary places that are going to go for our jarred green beans. For our normal green beans, we're going to be able to take those to the canning factory and sell those there if we don't own it. The farmer's market that is pre-placed, Goldcrest Valley, the train sell point, Grain Barge, Terminal 1 and 2, the Grain River Silo, and then of course we have our Preserve Food Factory, which is the canning factory that we already have placed here. So let's go ahead and move forward one month and see where things are. But before we do that, real fast, I harvested this field by myself. I didn't use a hired helper, and it took about a half hour. So you're gonna be able to harvest on average one hectare of green beans in about a half hour of real life time so two hectares for before you're going to incur another hourly least charge on the harvester just to give you a little frame of mind and a little sense of the cost of operating that with respect to leasing so <laughs> you'll see it's october I went and forgot to activate the green beans. So I did activate those green beans in September. We now have four pallets of jarred green beans, a thousand liters a piece. And we would have had six jars of these if we would have sold all of them or put all of them into our jarred plant here. $6,950 for a thousand liters of jarred green beans at our small farmer's kiosk large farmer's kiosk seven thousand and ten dollars per thousand liters and now our big farmer's market
5,629. So these smaller kiosks are definitely the way to go. And right now, with our variable economy, big farmer's kiosk is the preferred location. $7,011 per thousand liters. So if we had taken that and we had made mixed pellets out of that crop, well, we would have gotten $42,066 from our single hectare of green beans. So far, green beans have been the least profitable of the new crops in Farming Simulator 25. And quite frankly, it might be because of the fact that we didn't really see a extra yield bonus in green beans. Because our infographic said we were gonna get 13,000 and some odd liters per hectare. We had a plus 95 yield bonus, but we got basically exactly what we should have gotten in right around that same 13,000 and some hundred based on the infographic. And well, that feels like it's maybe a little bit off. And again, that may be fixed in a future update. So depending on when you watch this video, your results may vary because that may be patched out of the game after 1.3. Well, I'm currently using version 1.3 as of the recording of this video. Hope you all have enjoyed this adventure down through how do we plant green beans, care for green beans, harvest green beans, and what can we do with green beans after the fact. And until next time, happy farming.